let's look at chapter 8 of Pagano's Understanding Statistics, where we're going to look at random selection and probability. Let's uh, start off by talking about a very famous uh, presidential race, the first one that uh, surveys played a big role in. And so this was the Presidential Survey of 1938, 1936. It was uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt versus Alf Landon. And the Literary Digest was the most popular magazine in uh, America. It was the number one uh, uh, magazine. And they got this idea that, oh, we ought to put a, 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 a postcard in the magazine that people can send back to us that will say who they will vote for. And we will get thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands. And I'm actually, uh, uh, I think they got millions of people uh, to, to respond. And they thought, oh, with such a large sample, we're going to tell for sure who won. And so they predicted that uh, Landon would win 57% to 43% based on a survey of millions of people. Well, it turned out to be exactly the opposite. 62% of the people voted for Roosevelt, and, the, and uh, only 38% voted for uh, uh, Landon. And the reason for this was that it was a biased sample. The Literary Digest, as you can guess, appealed to more educated people and uh, the, the more upper class people. And so it was uh, um, uh, heavily biased towards Republicans. And so uh, they, even though they had a huge sample size, it wasn't a random selection of, of, um, of participants to get their opinion. And if we don't have a random selection of participants, if we don't randomly choose people that represent the population as a whole, uh, the uh, a survey will be completely inaccurate as it was in this case. Now let's look at some, con some basic concepts of probability. Um, first of all is that probability values are always positive and they're always between zero and one. For example, if we have a question will beep beep like new food, the uh, a probability of zero means that there's no way it would ever happen. If we were to ask him, beep beep, do you think you would like this food on the top? He would say, Black. no chance in the world. However, if we were to offer him a new uh, food that was chocolate and fluffy, what's the probability that he would like it? Oh, yeah. It would be a hundred percent sure that he would like the the that that new food. So that would be a probability of one. So probabilities are always between zero and one. Probability can be expressed in fractions, decimals, or percents. They're they're all the same. So for example, if we want to know the probability of getting an ace of spades out of a deck of cards with one draw, that would be one out of fifty-two. We could plug that into the calculator get 0 0.01923, or we can move the decimal points over two places and get the decimal 1.92%. All of those are the same, are ways of expressing uh, the same uh, probability, and you can express them in any way because they're all equal to numbers between 0 and 1. Now, often um, probabilities are sp stated in chances in 100 or some other round number. So we might round 1 in 52 off to uh, two chances in 100. Now, something interesting to note, that 10 chances out of 100 is the same as one chance out of 10. People tend to be uh, confused when uh, we uh, uh, talk about chances out of some number, and there's what's known as numerator bias. People, if you tell somebody, uh, or if you're trying to sell a... Uh, um, raffle ticket to them and say, there's 10 chances out of 100 to win, they're more likely to buy it than if you said there's one chance in 10 out of winning. Because 10 chances out of 100 seems higher because people focus on the 10, whereas one out of 10, which is the same as 10 out of 100, um, people focus on the one. And so we tend, this is a, a heuristic that we use, we overly focus on the, the first number in a fraction. Now, some other number, uh, some other uh, concept related to uh, probability that's good to understand are odds. Now, we're not going to be using odds in this class, but in uh, 
um, um, in medicine, in nursing, odds ratios are actually uh, common, fairly common. Um, but what is an odd? So just to, to describe what is an odd, suppose that there's a 75% chance of rain tomorrow. We could say that the probability of A, the probability of rain is three quarters, and the probability of it not raining is one quarter, right? Three quarters is 75%, one quarter is 25%. Now the odds of A occurring are the probability of A happening divided by the probability of A not happening. So the probability of it raining is three quarters divided by the probability of it uh, not raining, it's one quarter, and that would give three to one ra odds for raining tomorrow. Now let's define probability. There's actually several different uh, ways of defining probability, and philosophers uh, discuss this quite in depth. We're not going to discuss uh, too much, but we do want to look at a few, two different ways of doing it. The first way of looking at probability is the probability of A equals the probability of the events that are A divided by the total number of possible events. This is called a priori probability, where we uh, calculate things by looking at everything that can happen. For example, suppose we want to uh, uh, calculate the probability of, die, of rolling a six with one die. So we're gonna call this event a six, and we would say that the probability of six is one out of six because the number of events that are A, there's only one way to get a uh, die to be a, a six, and that's to get land on six. But there's total possible events that could occur are six. It could be one, two, three, four, or five, or six. So the a priori probability is one out of six. Now, suppose we wanted to calculate the a priori probability of getting a five or higher. We can call this event uh, five plus. The probability of getting five plus, there's two events that are above five, a five and a six, and we would wanna divide that by the total number of uh, possible events, six. So we would have two divided by six equals 0.33. So 0.33 is the probability of getting a five or higher. So that's the a priori probability that we sit down and calculate based on theoretical outcomes. Now, posteriori probability is based on experience. It's probability calculated after the events happen. A priori was before, posteriori is afterwards. And suppose we were to do a, a dice exercise. Um, we were to roll a pair of dice 20 times and, saw, and then you counted up the number of sevens that you got. You could calculate the number of the probability of getting a seven. You, maybe you got six sevens out of a total of 20, and then you're not, the probability would be the number of seven, six divided by 20. Maybe you would uh, get um, uh, 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 10 sevens, then it'd be 10 out of 20. So a posteriori probability is based on experience and it's not going to be exact. But if we do it enough times and take the average, we would get the, uh, we would get closer and closer to the a priori probability level. So the a priori probability level in this question, when if we had two dies, we were to calculate the probability of getting the seven, the number of possible, what we would calculate first, the number of possible ways of getting seven, and then divide it by the total number of possible rolls. Now this numerator, the pos number of possible ways of getting a seven, turns out that there's six of them with two die, and it goes like a one and a six, a two and a five, a three and a four, a four and a three, five and a two, six and a one. So there's six ways of getting a seven, and for there's 36 possible rolls, six ways of getting the first die, and for each of the six so six of the possible outcomes of the first die, there's six possibilities on the second die. So there's a total of six times six possibilities. So the a priori probability of getting a seven with two rolls would be uh, six divided by 36 would be one out of six or about 14% or 13%. 
All right. Now let's uh, let's think about a priori probability. Suppose we had a deck of cards with 52 cards. There's 13 of each suit. Uh, the the diamonds, hearts, the clubs, and spades, and they go from ace, which is like one, to king, which is like 13. We want to know what's the probability of getting the ace of diamonds with one draw. Now think about that. How many cards would be in that, that are categorized as the ace of diamonds? There's only one, and there's 52 cards. So we would say that since there's one ace of diamonds out of 52 cards, the prob probability is one out of 52 of getting the ace of diamonds with one draw. Now let's say, oh, what's the probability of getting a, a 10 with one draw out of a deck of cards? Well, there's four 10s, the two black ones and the two red ones. So it'd be four out of 52 or one out of 13. Now let's say we're asking the question, what's the probability of getting a queen or a heart? Aha, that's a good question. What's the probability of getting a queen or a heart? Well, there's four queens and there's 13 hearts, but there's one card that's both a queen and a heart, so that's doubly counted. So we have to subtract one of those doubles, the queen of hearts. So four plus 13, 17 minus one is 16 divided by 52, which is four out of 13, which is, um, uh, a little bit more than a, a third, maybe 38%, something like that, would be the possibility of getting a queen or a heart. Now let's talk about probability and normally distributed variables. So things that are distributed according to a bell curve. Let's uh, look at a, uh, an example here, and then uh, we'll go to Excel on the next video and look at this uh, more in depth, uh, but let's uh, let's get an idea of what's happening. Turns out that in the average month, Beep Beep eats 120 cookies with a standard deviation of eight cookies. So we've got a bell curve here with a mean of 120 cookies, so about four per day, and it's fairly narrow. Beep Beep tries to to not eat too much. That's right. He uh, uh, tries to, but he doesn't hesitate to eat those four cookies a, a day. So the standard deviation is only eight. So most of the time he eats between, say, 112 and 128 cookies. We want to know the probability that Beep Beep will eat 134 cookies. So that's a, um, the, a, a tail down here in a given month. And the probability of that is using our a priori probability formula. It's going to be the area under the curve corresponding to uh, 134 or more cookies divided by the total area under the curve. Now it turns out that for if we convert this to a z-score, this becomes pretty easy. First of all, because the total area under the curve is 1, so anything divided by 1 is the same. So we need to to calculate a z-score and then use our norm s dist function to calculate the area to the right of our z-score. So the information that we have is the average is 120 uh, cookies, the standard deviation is 8, the score that we're interested in is x, and we want to know the area to the right of x, 134 or more. So first thing we do is calculate our z, so we take our x minus our average and divide that quantity by the standard deviation. We got a z of 1.75. And norm s dist will give us the area to the right of our z-score. So we want 1 minus um, norm s dist of 1.75. And as we'll see on the next slide, that's going to be about 4%. That means there's about a 4% chance that beep beep would eat 134 more cookies. 134 cookies or more in a given month.